Thank you. I teach English, drama, and now I have a, we have a rugby club after school. So in English, we celebrate your intellectualism. In drama, we celebrate your creativity. And in rugby, we celebrate your fierce athleticism. And My name is Catherine Boric. I teach at Dominguez High School, and I teach AP English Lit, Drama 1 and Drama 2, and Avid 9. I've been teaching at Dominguez High School for 26 years now. The reason I decided to become a teacher is that I absolutely love learning. I love it. I love taking these big ideas and researching these big concepts and trying to figure out how to live the best life possible. I wanted to be a professor, but I think my talents lie actually in taking some of those big concepts and bringing them to high school students. I think high school students are one of the most interesting populations as far as their age, but coming adults just in that sort of in-between stage. and to give them the big ideas and to give them the philosophies and the stories that make us human and to see what they do with it, I, I think that's a gift and a beautiful thing to be able to, to witness. I was sent to Compton through Teach for America. Teach for America is a program that sends people right out of college and used to teach for two years, but two years wasn't quite enough. I thought I'd stay for four years, watch my freshman from my first year graduate. But after the end of the four years, I was like, I love it here. This is my home. This is my family. I also think that Compton needs to have teachers who are dedicated to excellence in the classroom. And if we keep losing them, it hurts our students and our students need, just absolutely need people who will stay with them and, and stay by while they go through this learning process. What makes Compton so special to me is, I think what a lot of times the test scores and, and such don't show is that we have some really creative students and some true problem solvers. And when I think of the highest form of intelligence, I think of creativity and problem solving. And it's hard to always tell that in the test scores, but our students do that really well. And, and I think that's something to be celebrated. When we get them up on that stage, they're not just answering A, B, C, D in a multiple choice test. They're showing what they can do with all the stories that they bring with them to the classroom. I am trained to be an English teacher. I am fundamentally an English teacher. I studied English in college. I got my master's in English. I love to read, I love to write. But uh, theater was one of the things I did in high school and it meant the world to me. So when I got here and we didn't have a theater program, oof, that hurt because you find yourself up on that stage. You find your, your weaknesses and insecurities and, and they're right out there for everybody to see. And that vulnerability gives you a chance to grow. So. When we didn't have a drama program, I was like, oh, oh let's see if I can start one. And, and we did, we started one. So back in 2000, we put on the first play that Dominguez had seen in we, 20 years. We're not quite sure how many years, but about 20 years. We had no stage, no budget, nothing. It was just a script and, and trying to get stuff done, trying to get people up on stage. Because one of my students, Jorge Velasquez, he was like, we gotta put on a play, Miss Bork. We gotta put on a play. He would come and tell me this all the time. I was like, fine, Jorge, let's do it. So I found my colleague, Karen Green Robinson, and, and she helped me. And the man I was dating at the time, Scott Hamilton Kennedy, he's like, I need to record this. He was a documentarian, so he came in and, and helped record this, this process and all the tension and all the, oh, that was really one of the most stressful experiences because everybody kept dropping out and everybody was frustrated. Nobody knew what to expect of this play. But once you do something once and people see it, then you're like, okay, I believe, I believe. So the play, it happened. June 8th, 2000, we put on our first play, um, Sold Out Crowd, and the movie OTR Town captures that. That film went to all sorts of film festivals. It won film festivals. It got shortlisted for an Oscar. But it was really fun to be an ambassador for Compton and Compton Unified and go out and show people our students and what they can do and what they're capable of. The praise and the love they got from, from all over the world was, was it, it was just a thrill to be a part of that. And our 2022 Compton Unified School District Teacher of the Year, Ms. Catherine Morris! <laughs> yeah. Being the Teacher of the Year was actually quite humbling. Um, it was an honor. I was so so grateful to get it. But then I walked around and I looked at all my other colleagues and I was who were doing work above and beyond what's expected of them. And to be placed in that category uh, was, was humbling because it, feel, it makes me feel like I have so much more work to do to get to the level that I need to get to. And I guess that's what next year is for and the year after that and the year after that. 
to earn this title of Teacher of the Year. One of the things that I think is most important to staying in teaching is to find balance. When I look at all those people who are doing such good work here, 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 I worry because if I did take on all those different things that they're so good at, I'd probably burn out. You want to dig into what you're good at and celebrate that and not try to do things that are going to destroy you, destroy your ability to keep showing up. I should also say that colleagues, finding one or two or three colleagues that inspire you, getting out of your classroom and working with them, having those conversations where you sit around and you just talk about education, you talk about pedagogy, you talk about what, what makes you passionate about this, because those things are contagious. And once you start talking to people who you respect, that can keep you in the game. So balance and collaboration, I think, are the two things that will help you stay in the game when you're feeling at the pits of despair. AP Lit, I get the high achieving kids, the kids who work really hard, and they're gonna do well no matter who they're with, I, I, I should imagine. But in drama, we get a wide range. We get a lot of people who maybe in other classrooms are considered you know, too loud or too fidgety or too this or too that. We also get a lot of students who are shy. They get here on their first day, they're like, I don't wanna be here. No, this is terrible, this is terrible. But one of the great loves of drama is we just say, first week. Once you've gotten this done in a week, once you've done this for a week, it'll get easier and easier and easier. So what happens in drama pretty much every time is once you get on that stage, that nervousness, that, whew, I'm not gonna be able to do this, you expose them to the fear and then they, they find their way. And by the end of the year, they might not be the extrovert yet, but they are comfortable getting on that stage and they know that if they battle past their fears, they can do it. Classrooms, I think we've gotten away from play a little bit. And when they're up there, they're like children playing, and, um, and that's, I think, where a lot of our best learning comes from. 26 years of teaching, there's a lot of scholars who have come through this room, and when I was younger, I wanted to be kind of the center of it all. And now as I get older and wiser, I want to be on the side watching them shine. What I'm hoping for is that they're finding that this class gave them something. When I think of students who have become like family now, and, um, and all the generations of you that I still get to be in touch with, it means a lot that you came into this classroom, that you were a part of this experience. And uh, when I get an award like this, it's because of you, the scholars, and what you've helped me become.